Hi, I'm Rob, and for this video, I'm going to make wood nuts, bolts, and screws. I have no reason to make this. I just always thought it was kind of cool, and I wanted to do it for a while, so I got off my rear and finally did it. I'm using Vectrix toolpath options for the threading, and we'll go in depth that in a little bit. For CNCing out the nuts and bolts, I'm in VCarve Pro here, and you can see the nut part of this. Of course, you have the outline, we'll cut the out, out on that, and this will be the nut, and also I'll be cutting out the top of the bolt, which I won't cut the threading on the inside, so it'll just be the top of that, I'll glue on. And I think for this process, I'm doing five nuts and two bolts, heads, and if I highlight tool paths, you can see what I've got here, that's the cutting a pocket before I do the threading, the actual threading, and cut the outside of the nut out. If you look real close, you'll see that I'm doing, like I say, those five, and these two, I'm not doing the inside. So they'll just be the tops of the bolt. So that's one part of it. And the other part, uh, let's just do it this way, is the threading on the bolt. And there's, well, several basic parts. I'm going to skim this into a uh, top. First, I'll skim the top to get it flat. Next step is I will do a profile around to make a cylinder out of the square piece of wood I'm starting with. And I chamfer the top a little bit. You'll see that later. It'll make more sense on the edge. And then the actual threading. The hardest part of setting these up for me was actually getting the dimensions right for the threading bit. So let's go into this and threading bit. What I'm using is a magnate. I don't know. Am I pronouncing that right? Somebody tell me if I got it right. A magnate 796. These are less than 20 bucks on Amazon. You can Google it and find it on there. I don't have any kind of affiliate link or anything like that. I'm just using this one because I saw it relatively inexpensive to start with. Here are the settings. You'll want to look at this pretty close. I mean, it talks about the length of the shaft and the, the tool offset, the size, all these things. I did some research and some calculations to get it right. I think this is pretty darn close to what you want. Actually, plunge rate, I might speed that up later. It could go faster than that. It does a good job, but that's minor. That's the settings. You'll want to save that if you use threading bit. And then when I set up the threading tool paths, that size threading end mill, you can't get any smaller than these dimensions here. Uh, it's just big enough. You can't fit inside a nut with that size bit, so you're going to have to do that. This is obviously the external, the outside of the bolt we're creating. You can do different pitches, whatnot. I might do one later that's not as fine of a threading tool path, so I might get a little more distance between the threads. You can set right-handed thread, left-handed thread. This is, of course, external. And we go and look at the inside. Of course, this is the outside. Let's close this. Go back to that one. Threading. Should be pretty much the exact same settings. You can change your tolerance in case it's too tight. Mine works fine. In fact, it's even a bit loose, though I'm extending out that bit as far as I can to get as much showing to, so I can do a deeper cut. And by doing that, I'm sure I have a little more run out. So inadvertently, I'm probably adding some fit tolerance on that that way. And again, internal. Again, you have to go right-handed. You have to do the same settings on these, except the only main difference is I've gone to external from internal on those two different tool paths. Same settings otherwise. And of course, depth will change too. We'll talk more about that later. And that's most of it inside VCarve Pro. Again, you'll want to look at those screens and copy them in case you're trying to do this yourself. Because I did a lot of trial and error getting it right. And I, I think this is the right settings to use these. At least I got a good product in the end. I'm happy with it. Take from that what you will. And if you want to reproduce this, uh, great. If not, do your own experiments, but this is a good starting point even if you use a, a different bit or something like that. So let's move on to the next step. Before we actually start cutting on the CNC, I want to talk about my individual CNC. Yes, it's an old plywood and wood machine. Not the prettiest thing, but it does a pretty good job. On the front of my machine, I have a clamp that I can clamp things to the side so it's perpendicular to the bit, and I built a jig to hold these pieces. Now, for the bolts, they need to be away from the edge so that the bits have room to circle around that and not run anything. So this works pretty well. 
I can hold bits in there the same place. It's very repeatable. So I can put it in there, take it out, put it back in, I can work with it. So this is, does a good job for what I'm trying to do. And now you can see me loading that blank into the clamp, the jig I have. I'm trying to set the top of that, basically it's the same height as the bed on the CNC machine. A little bit proud of that. And when I run a tool path, it will skim the top so it is almost exactly flush with the top of the CNC bed. And then we will go around this doing a spiral to make it into a cylinder. All these blanks I have are from scrap wood. Some of them are four quarter and some of them are three quarters of an inch. This one's evidently three quarters of an inch. You can see a flat spot on the side. Other pieces are a little bit wider and there's no flat spot. And again, this is just for testing. These won't be any kind of production environment, so it works fine. But for the people who are gonna nitpick and say, hey, there's a flat spot there, that's why. I'm gonna do probably six, seven of these. You won't see all of them on this, but that's my thought process. Notice how there's room for the bit to go around the outside of the bit without running into the CNC machine. That's because I built that jig that extends the ring away. It probably makes a little more sense now. This is full speed. The next one I do, will I'll speed up to 10 times speed. I mentioned a moment ago that I'm using a spiral toolpath to go down around these parts. And I use the spiral toolpath a lot, and I'll explain why. When doing a traditional toolpath, your bit will drop down, do a complete rotation around the product, whether it's like this or cutting something out, a little full circuit around, and then it will drop down again, another circuit around, drop down, another circuit around. And you can get tool lines doing that, plus it's starting and stopping. With a spiral toolpath like I'm doing, it's continuous. It does not stop, so you're not getting those tooling lines, and it's faster because it's not starting and stopping. Setting up a spiral toolpath like this is not hard at all. It's a traditional profile toolpath, and then the bottom where I put that red circle are the only changes you have to make to do a spiral. It's that easy, and like I say, I really like using a spiral toolpath for everything. Almost every profile toolpath I do is a spiral toolpath. The next question I'll answer before it's even asked is the bit. I'm using a Jenny quarter inch compression bit from Cadence Manufacturing. In the past, I'd tried compression bits and I was not happy with them. I didn't really understand why. I've learned they're optimized for a specific depth of cut. And most compression bits out there are made for a very aggressive cut like an industrial machine would do, not a hob machine like mine. And that's why I really like these compression bits from Cadence. They're optimized for a hob machine like mine, where I'm cutting less than a quarter inch per pass. Now that I've cut all my blanks into cylinders, it's time to actually start threading them. I actually have two separate tool paths here I combined. The first step will put a chamfer on top of my part, and the next step will actually put the threading around the edge. I'm back to full speed on the video, not sped up, and later once I start doing more of these, we'll speed it up so we don't waste too much time. If I was really concerned about production time and cranking a lot of these out, I'm confident I could speed the machine up quite a bit still. It's not taxing the machine at all, it's taking just a little bit off per pass here, so I'm not in a big rush, so I'm fine doing this speed, but if I was really concerned, I could speed this up quite a bit, I think. And back to 10 times speed here, I'll do a few more of these threaded rods or bolts, what are we going to call these things? And then I'll start doing the tops and other parts. I had to solve a unique issue, at least unique for me, using a threading tool bit. Normally on a bit, the business end, the cutting end, is the very bottom of the bit. But on a threading bit, it's a quarter inch up, which is kind of strange. I had to solve this issue. So my options were plunge into the spoil board when threading the nuts or lift up my piece of wood by a little over a quarter inch so I could cut through it without going into the spoil board. On these tool paths, I'm going to cut out five nuts and I'll first I'll do the pockets before I thread those. And then there will actually be seven cutouts here. Five will be the nuts and two will be heads of bolts. They'll all be the the hexagon shape that we think of for nuts and bolts. Obviously the first one is at normal speed and the others are at 10 times speed. 
And I will do a quick tool change from the compression Jenny I used and go to the threading bit and touch off so I have the zero set correctly. And like the rest of the video, the first tool path I will do at normal speed and then I'll speed up to 10 times speed to not waste everyone's whole day watching CNC threading tool path. And like before, I'm pretty sure I could speed up the tool path doing this, but I'm only doing this once. I'm not looking for a production environment, so if it takes a little longer, no big deal to me. Even though it's done with a threading toolpath, I'm gonna to run it again just so we can see some different angles. First of all, from the Linux CNC screen, so we can watch how it looks there, which admittedly is kind of cool. I like seeing this, even though it gets boring after a while, but showing it off once is kind of interesting. And now I'll try to hold the camera steady as it threads this piece again. Uh, the nice thing doing this way is it's not throwing chips everywhere, so we can actually see kind of what it's doing. And for the final angle of threading, we look at the side, we can see it, actually we can't see it right now through the piece of wood, but we'll see it pop out the bottom as it's threading that, and we can understand why I had to raise that board without destroying my spoil board as it threads that nut. For cutting out the hexagon shape for the nuts and the top of the bolts, I'm not gonna go slow speed on this. This is 10 times speed. I did make a mistake in here, or at least I didn't think ahead on something. I do have tabs holding it in place, but because it's raised up a little bit off the bed of the CNC, those tabs aren't as effective as normal, so, I should have made the tabs wider and taller both, I think, to make this work better. I stopped the process a few times, pulled them up, and then restarted the CNC again. So that's why it's a little bit jerky here, Things, strange things happening. One of them actually got scarred up on the side, so I threw that one away. We already saw as we cut out the nuts and we cut out the top for the bolts. Now I'm gonna cut out some Phillips heads for what will be a wood screw, which Usually when you think of wood screw, this is not what you think of if you imagine a wood screw, but it is a wood screw. So we're cutting the tops, now I'll do a 3D tool path. Once again, I'm using a Jenny bit. This is the Jenny Big B. It's a quarter inch ball nose. Normally for a project like this, I'd be using dust collection 100% of the time, but for video, it just doesn't look very good. So we can watch the chips fly and I'll clean it up later. And now I will glue those Phillips tops onto the threaded rod to create a wood screw. I will close the video with the same clip when I started the video showing how these actually work. I haven't nailed down an exact project I want to use these for in the future, but I've got a couple ideas. Some kind of steampunk themed project with moving parts. I think that would be really cool. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like and even subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone.